My name is Colleen Murphy. Um, I work on the Forge modules team at Puppet Labs. Um, I help contribute to the Stack Forge Puppet modules, and um, which are community maintained. And then I'm in the primary maintainer for the Puppet Labs OpenStack module, which wraps all the Stack Forge modules. Um, so can I see for um, to start off who's ever used Puppet? Okay, who is currently using Puppet? Okay, uh, is there anyone who's never used Puppet? Okay, great. So for those of you who haven't ever used Puppet, Puppet is a configuration management tool. So what it excels at is describing the desired state of a single node in an abstract language. So that means I can describe what packages I want installed, um, what the configuration files for those packages are going to look like, um, how the services are going to be running, that kind of thing. So one of the biggest strengths that Puppet has is that it promotes this um, modular approach to describing these services. And we have a Puppet Forge, which, um, which is where the community can publish their Puppet modules um, in kind of a similar manner to, to system packages or gems or Python libraries. Um, for OpenStack, we have a single module for each OpenStack service. So we have the Nova module and the Cinder module and the Neutron module and that kind of thing. So uh, for this demo, If I can get the video to run. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. I apologize for that. Um, so for this demo, we're going to be using Puppet Enterprise 3.7, which is scheduled to be released in a few days. Um, and we're going to be using CentOS 7 for our nodes. Um, and uh, it's important to note that this is kind of a preview. We don't have yet um, official Juno releases for these Puppet modules. Um, so if you want an official stable release, you can download the Icehouse versions of these modules from the Puppet Forge. If you want to start playing with Juno, you can get these um, all from GitHub. Um, I think this is going. <sighs> Sorry, this doesn't really want to. OK. Sorry for the delay. Um, so we're using Puppet Enterprise 3.7. We're going to set up um, eight nodes in this OpenStack cluster. Um, let's see. Um, so again, like I was saying, it's, um, these are kind of in work in progress mode. These aren't official yet. These are still considered unstable. But the Pub Labs OpenStack module provides you a, with a Puppet file, and you can use a tool like R10K to automatically install all of the StackForge modules that you'll need for this. Um, after you've installed all these modules, um, the, and I apologize for the font size, it's a little bit small, um, but after you've installed all these modules, you're going to want to configure your higher data um, to give to these modules, because there is a lot of data that goes into these modules that are going to be specific to your environment. Um, so what, what happened there was um, there was an example higher data file that comes with the Puppet Labs OpenStack module. I went ahead and copied that into my higher data directory, which is where your higher data lives. And then you can start changing the values to fit your configuration. So I have um, some, some nets and IP addresses that Neutron is going to use. 
Um, I have some static IP addresses for the controller node and the storage node. I have credentials for the database and the RabbitMQ server. I have some default Keystone users that are going to be set up. And I have credentials for all the service users that are going to be set up in Keystone. So all this data gets, um, gets put into Hira. And we also, in this deployment, I'm de um, using, um, in this deployment, um, I have special Hira files for our Swift nodes. And those are going to define a zone for each node. It's a little hard to see, but that says the zone is going to be number one. And for our other zones, our other Swift nodes, the zone would be two or three or so on. Um, and that way, later, when we get to assigning roles in the console, um, defining these data values is going to be a breeze. And then once we've, um, after we've added these higher data values, um, we'll need to change our, open, or change our higher configuration a little bit. And we'll need to restart the Puppet Master for this. Um, I'm using the YAML backend for Hira because that's the simplest, but you can use any data store that you want for your Hira backend. So now we have that kind of set up. Now we can actually start assigning roles to our nodes. Um, so Puppet Enterprise 3.7 provides a new node manager that can be used to classify nodes based on properties of the nodes. Um, so we do that in the classification tab. There it goes. So we're going to assign, or we're going to create groups for each type of node. Um, so the controller node is going to get the controller group, etc. cetera. Um, it's going a little bit slow. OK, so in this demo, we're going to create the OpenStack controller group. We're going to add the group, click on the group to edit it, and then we're going to assign nodes to it. In my case, I'm going to use the host name fact um, to assign the controller node um, to this group. And you can see that this is going to match one node in our infrastructure. We're going to add the rule, and then we're going to assign a role to it. Um, in this case, it's going to be the OpenStack role controller class, which provides this role. And so this role plus the higher data we already configured is enough to get our control node going. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I think, is that these nodes need to be set up in a specific order. So you need the control node with its database, um, the database, the RabbitMQ server, and all the identity services, you need that set up before you can start installing all the other nodes. So that's where our live management comes in. We can um, head, to live, head to live management and select just the control node and kick off a puppet run just for this particular node. Um, not through the console. Um, anyways, we can check on the progress of the controller node um, from, by tailing the logs. Um, and this will take about 15 minutes to run. So um, it's installing the MySQL server. It's installing the RabbitMQ server, um, setting up identity services, and Solometer, and Heat, and um, Horizon. And then we can once that's all configured, we can start following the same process for the other nodes. So, um, so we can create a group. Um, we can add rules for this group. And then we can assign a role to this particular group. So we have the compute group, which gets the compute role. The network group gets the network role. The block storage group is going to get the block storage role, and so on. And then once we get to the Swift nodes for the object storage, um, we have three nodes in our infrastructure that are meant to be Swift nodes. And we can, all, we can add them all to the same group. So again, we're going to classify these by the host name because they all have to happen to be Swift store 01, 02, 03 in our case. Um, this is going to match three nodes in this infrastructure. And we're going to assign the Swift storage role to this group. And you will notice that 
Um, this role has a parameter that you can assign to it, the zone role, and we could, we could via the console, assign zones to each node, but we've already taken care of that in Hira, so we don't, um, we don't need to do those individually via the console. And then we can go back to live management. We can select all of our OpenStack nodes except for the control node, and we can kick off another puppet run for all these nodes. And again, we can follow the progress by tailing the logs if we wanted to. These will take about five minutes or so to configure. So now the Swift module uses exported resources, which means um, that we need PuppetDB in order to manage these resources and share them in between nodes. Uh, Puppet Enterprise comes with PuppetDB installed, so all that means for us is that we need to kick off one more, one more Puppet run on the controller node so that it can collect all the exported resources from the Swift node. So we're back in live management. We're going to select just the control node and kick off another run. And it is creating all these uh, rings for us now. So now the rest of this demo is just going through and um, checking out our OpenStack and checking that everything works. So we can go to Horizon, which is living on our controller. Puppet has created a test user for us, so I can log in as that. This is the OpenStack Juno dashboard. Puppet's created some other resources for us um, by default just to test it out, so we can um, check out in our network topology. Puppet's created the public and private networks for us. And in our images, we can see that Puppet's already added a small test image for us. We've, added, we've got the CROS image. And we can use that to boot our first instance. So we can launch an instance. We can give it a name. And we can tell it to boot from that image and add it to the private network and launch it. That'll take a few minutes. Once that's booted, um, once that's booted, we can log into the image with the VNC console in the browser, and we can just use the default CROS user for this test image. So we can also test out that our Cinder installation worked. So we can head over to the Volumes tab. And uh, we can create a new volume. We can configure our volume. That'll take a, also take another few minutes to create and we can attach it to our new instance. Uh, under Actions, we edit Attachments and select our test instance. And you can see it notified us that we have a new volume dev at VDB. So we can go back to our test instance. We can um, check it out. You can see that the new device is there. And we can do whatever we do with block storage devices. We can make a file system. We can mount it. We could unmount it. We could mount it on a different instance. All right. Um, another thing we get from this module is um, we have heat configured for us, so we can actually launch a stack um, from heat. In this demo, I'm using one of the uh, example templates from the heat templates repository. You can get that just directly from the web. And configure all the parameters for this template. And we can click on our stack, and we can see our new topology for the stack. And 
And we can go to our instances list and see that this heat stack has created some new, um, new instances for us. So one of the last things to show off is we have um, object storage set up. So we have these three zones. Um, we can create a container. And we can upload objects to the container. And then we can check out Solometer as well. Um, we can see that in action in the resource usage, usage tab. So for example, we can check out our CPU usage for the last few minutes. And um, yes, so that was an example of how you can set up OpenStack with Puppet Enterprise. Um, the StackForge modules are developed by this Puppet OpenStack community on StackForge. Um, the Puppet Labs OpenStack module is a Puppet Labs maintained um, repository on GitHub. You can download the stable version of Puppet Labs OpenStack from the Puppet, Mo from the Puppet Forge, um, which is the Icehouse version. And if you want to start playing with the Juno version, um, you, can you can find that on GitHub. And at this point, I'm ready to answer any questions you have. I apologize for some of the technical difficulties that I had there. Um, yes? Um, can you repeat your question? So for the database, uh, uh -huh. can you, can uh, the OpenStack module depend on like MariaDB Galera as opposed to just simple MySQL? Um, right now they're configured to use either, um, either MySQL or Maria depending on your, um, on your, uh, on your system, um, or you can configure it to use Postgres. I don't know if you can configure it to use Galera. Um, but I don't think it would be that much that difficult to set that up. What other questions do you have? Yes. Say that again. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. High availability. Okay, so that is a that is currently not available with this Puppet Labs OpenStack module. That is on the roadmap for the Puppet OpenStack community. We definitely expect that to be available by Kilo. Yes. Yes, so um, you can use the site.pp uh, file, which is uh, just a manifest in your, um, in your Puppet directory. Um, and that just is a file that describes it. So that's um, maybe a little bit easier in some cases. You could also use a different node classifier if you wanted to. Um, and I believe the Puppet Enterprise has an API that you can use as well. Um, so you can use that to script it. I have one more minute left. Are there any other questions? All right, thank you very much.